Hi friends, I just recently returned from a trip to Park City, Utah during Sundance Film Festival. I made a video about that, which is on the channel that me and my wife share, I'll link to that. But I took some photos while I was there, and I would like to talk about the photos, or a few of the photos that I took. Now, Park City is a very conducive place for pleasing photos. There were a lot of people downtown. This was accentuated by Sundance. It's a very pleasing looking downtown area. Lots of interesting, colorful houses. It's a ski town, so all around in the mountains you see skiers. And uh, there's a ski lift going up from the middle of downtown up to the top of a mountain. Very interesting. Very eclectic, if you will. But just because a place is conducive for photography doesn't mean it's always easy to find the right photo. And the last photo I'm going to show you today is a fantastic example of that where my body was aching from standing in one spot, holding the camera up, trying not to miss a shot. It became very difficult and it took a lot of patience. I'll get to that in a minute. But here's the first photo. Here we have a photo of downtown Park City with the free trolley that would roam up and down picking people up. We have a skier getting on the free trolley. I found that the skier and the trolley made for a good subject to elevate the, the overall story, which is Park City, the downtown life of Park City. There are a couple of interesting elements that are present here that make this photo come together. If you notice, the background is very bright. In fact, it is the brightest part of the image. The subject of the image is the darker point. Now, I think one of the things that makes this photo come together like it does is the fact that that free trolley sign is very bright. It's lit up and it, it grabs your eye. And also, of course, that the focus point is on the trolley as well. It would have been interesting if a nice sunbeam was hitting the trolley and the rest of downtown was in shadow, but just because you don't have that type of situation doesn't mean a photo can't work. Any situations where you have a downtown area that's very cluttered, I'm sure you can see in the background signs going all the way up and down the side of the road that say no parking. I'm always in a bit of a poetic dance with that clutter, trying to cut things out of the scene that do not add to the photo and put more focus in on things that, that make the photo come together in a cohesive manner. My goal is not necessarily to get rid of the clutter because the clutter has its place too, but it's to organize it in the photo in a way that makes that organizes chaos into order. One interesting thing about the composition of this photo is I got off the ground. I noticed a balcony as I was walking up the road and it's a good idea to pay attention to ways to get off the ground or maybe get lower. Uh, find, find ways to move yourself around when trying to take a photo of the street. You will achieve more unique angles that way. What I like about the angle of this photo is I'm not high enough that it feels like I'm, I'm 90 feet off the ground or I'm intentionally high off the ground. It just looks a little bit different than if I was on the ground and it adds some intrigue. Ah, I often notice things in my photos when I'm making these videos and I noticed in the top left corner of the photo, right beside the light that's coming down, you see two people walking across the street and their strides are perfectly in sync and fully strided. Beautiful. It's all about the timber set. Also, I like that I was able to illustrate a sense of motion in this photo. One popular technique for illustrating motion is to drag your shutter tremendously. That's why you'll see photos of these Formula One racers where the background is completely blurred and that's that's just the photographer doing this. In this case, I didn't do that. One reason being because the trolley was not going 190 miles per hour. What I'm talking about is the skier. You have the skier with this nice stride and you can clearly feel that the, the, the person is moving towards the trolley to get on. Creating a relationship between two objects is a great way to illustrate motion as well. Okay, now we have the photo from the other end of downtown. Once again, I elevated myself off the ground for this one. I got on a little footbridge. In this photo, once again, I was very intentional about having a main point of interest, being the person walking across the street. I also enjoy the people with the reflectors who are directing traffic and their, their sort of expressions. The guy's got his arm out like that. I stacked the elements in this photo to create a tremendous and pleasing sense of depth. In the nearest foreground, we have the Christmas lights out of focus. Then we have the people. Then you go up the road to this big hill, and which which gives an idea of the scale of the town versus the hill, creates a sense of contrast. And then we have the leading line of the road itself. All of these things come together in the photo to take all of the chaos that is present in this scene and organize it. Now, I believe there are some houses on top of that hill, but what would have made this photo so much better is if there was a nice red house all the way on the top. It would have been a fantastic cherry on top for the photo. Also, I, I guess what would have made it more interesting is if there was a moose stampede coming across the intersection here. 
However, I understand that would be an insurance nightmare, and I think it's probably really hard to find a moose insurance protection plan. Anyway, moving on, here's the next photo, and this photo, my friends, is about patience. I stood in this one spot with the camera up to my eye, waiting for a person to walk by and capture them in mid-stride. Now, this is a very narrow window of opportunity, and I couldn't see them coming, so I had to be prepared when for the for the for the quarter of a second of them going past the doorway. Now, what would happen is there would be nobody for an enormous amount of time. Then two people would pop up in the background in a way that would not help my photo if someone did walk past. When someone walked past, they were either extremely interesting and I did not have the camera up to my eye or I had the camera up to my eye and I did not want to take a photo of that person. I waited around, grabbed this shot. I did not know at that point if it was going to scratch my tickle, so to speak. So I waited around a little bit more, finally gave up and settled with this one. I thought this one would be a pretty good one. And it actually turned out really well. I liked her red hat. Uh, she has a very interesting overall look. Now, of course, catching her mid-stride was very important for this photo. It was also important that there was uh, nobody in the background. I guess, I, I suppose there could have been a way where that would have worked, but I was trying to keep people out of the background as much as possible. And I had a, I had a paintball gun, so, which aids in that. What I did not have to wait for was this very interesting scene in the alleyway here. You have these nice 1920s style lights coming in. I chose to put four of them in the frame. I love the walls. I love the gray over the top just a, a very interesting area dark and then of course the roadway aspect this alleyway other than those points of light was very dark which created a nice framing for the scene outside of the alleyway which was much brighter the contrast of lighting worked really well here and it's a really good idea to look for these types of scenes where you can focus someone's attention in on a specific area now all throughout the photo taking process of that day I was waiting around and enduring frustrating situations of the right scene but the wrong person or no person even even though it was very busy. I was like, why is there no one crossing the street right now? Uh, it, it took a lot of patience to find the, the right shots at the right time. And it's important to be prepared to go out with a patient mindset. If you can find a perfect scene where you're only missing a nice subject to walk into the frame, it's a good idea to stay there, be calm, and also if you can maybe set a timer, count down in your head, uh, this will help you <laughs> kind of withstand the, I don't want to call it boringness, but the, the tediosity, which is waiting for that thing and the frustration, which is waiting for things to come together. Anyway, that's it for this video. Please feel free to engage below. If you liked it, please feel free to like it. And if you liked it that much, please feel free to subscribe. Uh, I hope you have a lovely day. Goodbye. And always keep an eye out for a local moose stampede. You think it can't happen in your town, but it can happen anytime, anywhere. Little Timmy from Aardvarkburg, Missouri, thought that he wouldn't be ran over by a moose. But in, on May 12th, 1812, he was ran over by a moose stampede. His body was ripped in 5,000 pieces. They put him back together and he's on display in a museum, but I absolutely would not recommend it. It's a horrific sight. Uh, but anyway, look out for mooses. Thanks. Or meese.